Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started again. Here's what we're going to do for this last little part of class here. We are going to talk about really how we link the models back to the architectural model, but continue to talk about this whole issue of modeling structural elements and how we go through and kind of do that both a little more easily, but also in ways that sort of give you a little more power. So let me kind of look at sort of at a high level what we've been down doing here. As we think about, you know, putting together a model, the big issues are what structural system we're going to use, whether it's wood, steel, or concrete, and then this whole issue of where we're going to place them. We get to place where they're going to be in the XY plane, and typically we put them on the grid line, we think about really where things are going to be, you know, on the grid, where the grids are relative to the walls. Then we get to think about really where they are relative to the floor levels, and again, what we saw with that steel is that it's a steel structure, we tend to put them slightly below the floor level because we need to sort of offset so we don't interfere with floor plan. Floor plan. Uh, concrete, on the other hand, we tend to put them right at the floor level because uh, that concrete's allowed to sort of intersect. As we've been modeling, it typically starts out with going through and putting in um, some sort of columns then some sort of beams that are going to go through and support those, and finally supporting a floor. So we're kind of in this territory right now, thinking about beams and columns. But we can do it some other ways, and I'll kind of illustrate some other strategies here. But for today, what we're really focusing on is just the gravity system, how to keep the floor up. Okay, and that's a good starting point, or a roof. It's about the same issue. So here we are, and we started out over here. This was looking pretty good. If you want to go through and uh, work to create your structure and go through and do it relatively quickly, there are some really cool tricks to make it easy. So for example, if we go back to level one again, go to level one of the structural plan, if you would like to put basically columns at all of the grid locations, you can. What you can do is say that I want to go through and put the columns in. But we're going to change it a little bit. It's still going to be a vertical column, but as opposed to putting them in every level one or every one at a time, I'm going to do a height level two, that's the same. But I'm going to use this little shortcut over here which says at grids. What that does is it'll take every grid location, every grid intersection, and put a column there. So if I choose the at grids tool, it looks like this. I can say this grid, this grid, that grid. I'm just shift clicking to grab a bunch of grids. And when I say finish, it'll put a whole forest of columns in there. So let me go back to 3D structural. Okay, you see I have a whole bunch of columns in there right now. So it's really quick to get columns in there if you just put them in grid locations. So that's actually a pretty good starting point. It may turn out that I don't want to use all those columns, and that's quite okay. If so it turns out that I don't really want to use one of the columns, I'll just choose it and delete it. I don't get rid of anything that I don't necessarily <coughs> want. So for example, oh, right over here, maybe I don't want to have a column right there, I'll just take it out. So that's kind of quite okay. When it comes time to put the beams in, similar sort of things work. You can go through and put in all the beams individually, and often I do that when I'm getting started and I'm just kind of working very carefully on the structure. What I'll do is, since I know that that minus five inches I want to have applied to all the different members, I'll put it in before I place anything. That'll actually make it now a default value for everything that gets placed from here on out. So. Minus zero five, put that one in here, put that one over here. I can start putting those together. There's actually a shortcut though that makes pretty sh easy work of this too. If you wanna go through and put all the grid lines, uh, or beams on all the grid lines, what we can do is actually look at the structural plan. So let me look at the sort of, for example, the structural plan of level two, so I'm going to put those beams at the level two level. And 
you'll see a few of them are in there. The ones that are sort of, uh, let me turn off the thin lines so you can see them better. You can see the uh, kind of heavy lines in there where the beams are. If you want to go through and put beams right at the grid lines, what we'll do is we'll choose the beam tool. And we'll say, let's go ahead, I'll put them at level two, I'll put them on grids. And if you choose that, and then you choose one grid line, you choose another grid line, another grid line. I'll grab these grid lines in this direction. I'll finish that. Okay, let's take a look at it in 3D again. Welcome back. That's not good looking. Okay, so now I have a bunch of grids. Kind of generally looking pretty good. I got a bunch of columns. Oops, maybe I need a few more beams on the front. I missed that. This is actually looking pretty reasonable now. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about the next thing we typically do. If, for example, the same sort of structure is going to be relatively common, it's going to be on level one to level, or level zero to level one, and also on level two to level three, what I can do is copy this and sort of copy it between the different levels. We're just doing basic structural element modeling right now. Okay, stuff that I think you'll be familiar with. So if, for example, I want to get all those structural columns and beams, and I'm going to copy them to the different levels just so I can kind of really quickly uh, get a framework going for the whole building. I can just grab all of that stuff. I can filter. What I really only want to get are the structural columns and the structural framing. You notice that there's also these things called analytical columns, analytical beams, and analytical walls, as well as floors in there. I'm going to turn those off. Let me show you what those are, too. Let me, actually, let me pop back out and show you that. Here, we'll do this. As we've been working, there has been, in parallel with our work, this model being created. This model is the analytical model. So this is the line model that shows the columns, it's showing the beams, the connections between them. This is actually the model of the structural analysis packages. So if you're used to working in ETABs or you know, one of these structural modeling packages, you're probably used to constructing models like this. And what Revit does is it constructs that same model for you in parallel. So as you place them physically, it's creating an analytical model. So let's grab those. I'm going to filter because I just only want to get the structural columns and the structural framing. Say OK. So I got all those. And if I would like to copy those up here on the clipboard, over here in the kind of clipboard section of the modify tab, you can copy the clipboard. Now I'm going to paste aligned to another level. So let me try taking that to level three. And you'll see it'll just copy that structure up. There we go. I can also paste the line to, down to level one, and that'll put it down on the lower level too. Now, this initial model is not very sophisticated. This is kind of just a very basic structural framework. But it's probably not bad as a starting point. And even though you will change it, and you will take out some columns, and maybe we'll cantilever some things, and we'll hang some things, we'll come up with more sophisticated strategies, this is actually not a bad starting point. And if you have this, you can then adapt it and kind of take things away and add things to it. So let me add the last thing to this very basic structural model it was probably what's necessary to help get going will be the foundation elements. So let's put a few of those in, and then I'll link it back to architectural. Then we'll go back and adjust this and make it a little more interesting. So here I have my model. It's not looking too bad. 
At the bottom of all these gravity elements, it's all going to come on down. It's going to hit under the ground. We need to put some support there just to keep those very concentrated loads from creating a rupture in the ground if we exceed the loading capacity of the ground. So what I typically do is go through and put some sort of a footing in there. You have isolated footings, which are very good for point loads from columns. We have wall footings. If you have a structural wall, either a footing wall or a shear wall, we can put on that. A slab is just an entire area. So I'll put some isolated footings in here. I'm going to put them at level zero. And I can place them. I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to say at columns and just put it right there. I'll shift click or control click. Okay. And when I finish, I have something that's a pretty reasonable facsimile for my structure. Okay, again, we're going to adapt it and make it a little more interesting in just a second. But this is a good starting point. Okay, so our structural engineer has been working away. They've been creating this model with all the structural elements. This is looking pretty good. You now, as the architect, are probably wondering, how does all this fit into my beautiful architectural creation? You know, can I see it all together? And the structural engineer should probably save this away and basically send you a copy or a link to it so you can kind of like uh, link back to it the same way he has. So what I'm going to do is do a save as. Let's go ahead and I'll make this 0A5. Structural model with elements placed. And if you want to catch up and you fell off a little, let me just go ahead and post that out there to the file server too, so you can have that. OK, so if you want to grab the structural model I've been working on, there it is. So 0A5 is the one for you. OK, the uh, next thing to do is say, OK, great, I got a structural model. Let's link the architectural or it into the architectural model so you can see how it all works together. And how you do that is as follows. So as the structural engineer, you've been working over here. And you might remember when we linked the structural model or the architectural model to the structure, we had to close the architectural model because it couldn't keep it open for editing at the same time you were uh, linking to it. So we need to do a similar thing over here. I'm going to close the structural model. And I'm going to open up the architectural model, old 0A1. And we'll bring it back. So this is where we got started. Okay, you might remember that architectural model. If I want to bring the structural model and link it back in, it's actually just like we did for the structural model or the architectural model to it. What I'm going to do is say insert. And I insert a link to a Revit file. Where can we go? Insert. I will link to a Revit file. And I will choose that structural model. Again, watch out for this origin to origin, center to center. Origin to origin is almost always the best place. That's choosing the alignment. I'll say OK. And you'll see what happens is. This will link all of the structural model elements back in here. So now you can sort of see how this structure is playing with my architecture. Now, some things aren't looking so good right now. But, you know, we'll kind of adapt some of those things. But you can see where the architectural is relative to the structural. In terms of that structural, though, notice this aspect of it. If you try to click on the structural elements, you can't get them. You get the sort of blue look but don't touch box because you don't really own the structural elements. The structural engineer does. So at this point, if he wants you to go through and change your architecture, he has to tell you and have you uploaded your model. If you want 
him to go through and change the structural model, you basically have to tell them, and then like they change it, and you're going to always be working everything with a little bit of negotiation there, just kind of protecting each other's work. And it's really done that way to protect you from the liability of accidentally making changes to someone else's model. So it all starts with just creating these very basic structural frames. And when you have that, you can save that away. But in this model, you might notice it's not exactly what we have in mind. So let's go through and kind of enhance our model a little bit. Okay? And we'll think about this relative to some of the models that you guys have seen. But for the most part, this is a good starting point for most people's models. It's just some sort of a structural frame that has just columns, it has uh, beams, it has some sort of floors to support the loads. And that is really a very common arrangement for a lot of people's models. Okay, so I'm going to close this away. I'm going to go back over to the structural model because we're going to make some changes. So I'm going to open up that 0A5 again, and I'm going to continue enhancing it. Because there's all these different things that are true that may actually sort of affect the way you start thinking about your structure. Because structure, it doesn't have to be so boring. This is actually a pretty kind of regular, almost sort of boring sort of arrangement right now. And depending on what we want to achieve architecturally, we may not want to have this forest of columns and beams and all this kind of stuff. So you might want to do things that are a little bit different. For example, let us consider some of these different scenarios. Let's consider the scenario that maybe we don't want to have um, all these kind of intermediate columns. We want to think about there being a very nice long span, something that really has something longer than you can typically span with a single column or with a single beam. Okay. So we can go through and, for example, take out some columns. Okay. That's OK. If you think that we could actually assign something so that we can basically bring this across all the way to join it here and sort of come up with a reasonable size, that's kind of A-OK. -okay. That is fine. We could have a very deep beam. And what we'll find out is that you know, when we size up the structure, that may get to be a very tall beam. It may be larger than we want. But we can go through and do the analysis. There's nothing that says that everything has to be simply supported. We can have beams tied to other beams. Say similar thing sort of up here. We can bring this across and resize that beam coming across here. What can happen, though, is if you have very long spans, like, oh, like Peter, for example, I was, uh, I was showing your model a little bit on like, uh, like Thursday. If you have a very long span, like how long does the span across the, uh, the kind of main aquarium space? Like, I mean, it is uh, 100 feet. Oh, yeah, 100 feet. Okay, 100 feet is probably longer than a simple beam would be good to span. It would have to be very, very deep and very chunky, or we'd probably just have some stability problems. So a simple beam is probably not a good choice there. For very long spans, we often use trusses. Okay? And if you want to think about trusses to span over these very large open spans, you think about like coliseums and sports arenas or just big warehouses, spaces where you want big open spans. What I can do is take out the beam, and there's actually a truss tool. So the truss tool is under structure. It's right here. Trusses work like this. You basically choose a shape of the truss. This is just a little flat truss, a how truss right now. But there are other shapes available too that we could load in. But what we're going to do is I'm going to place this at level three and just go from here all the way over to here. It'll create a truss. Now, when you're creating trusses, there's some choices that are available. There's the whole question of, is the truss bearing on the lower cord or the upper cord? And if I want it to be the top cord as opposed to the lower cord, I can change that down. Now, that's a very tall truss. I can change the truss height. I only want it to be three feet tall. Realize trusses do take up a whole lot more room. So 
there's all sorts of things about the size and the geometry and the size and the members and the overall shapes in terms of what's going to work and not work. But we can start following dresses. Trusses generally work pretty well. They have one sort of interesting property you should be aware of, and that is they're made up of a lot of individual elements. So if you only have big chunky elements loaded into your structure, into your model, it'll be made up of big chunky elements. Let me go back to showing you what that looks like. You can sort of see these are all big chunky elements. The reason is they're defined right now just to use kind of these big wide flange sections. If you want to sort of make it a little slenderer and just a little more uh, kind of elegant, you can load in. Let me load in some smaller elements. I can go to structural. I'm going to go steel. I'm going to load in some tube steel sections. You can sort of choose some sizes. I'm going to go for some that are sort of in the six by six or four by four range. Again, don't worry too much about the precise size because the analysis software actually helps us figure out what the correct size needs to be. But I can choose that truss and in its definition, I can say that for the diagonals, I want to go through and use a smaller section. that'll look a little bit better. Now, don't worry about the fact that as you look at this in Revit, you can see that it looks like, oh, the members don't really join. What happens is just for convenience and quickly rendering, when Revit goes ahead and puts structural elements together, as soon as they intersect, it stops. Okay. Really, just go on out, it would be all flattened and coped and molded together, but just for the making it quicker to draw in Revit, it shows this like, the fact that the lines fully connect, the colored lines fully connect, it's, it is going to analyze properly structurally. And we will just think about there are probably a few cases where the structural structure will be exposed where you, for rendering purposes, want to clean it up. But don't bother cleaning it up everywhere. Because it really is just, uh, it really has more to do with the scale. And if it's hidden, it doesn't really matter. OK, so we got this nice truss. He's looking pretty good. <coughs> Trusses are definitely in your toolkit. Another thing that's in your toolkit, uh, I think some of you, in fact, I can think of some folks who have very big, interesting, and daring cantilevers in your buildings. And let's talk about that, because that's another sort of really good and interesting condition. If, for example, you have a cantilever and you want to extend this out, let me go to, oh, for example, this looks like level two right now. Go to the end of my building over here. If I want to think about cantilevering, that's quite OK. What I can do is just basically pull this on out, pull that on out. OK, looks like I'm not doing a very good job of uh, joining them that way. I'll pull here. Actually, I'm on level two. I think I'm on support level two. That's fine. And let me join those two together. I wonder if I can trim those together. Let me try that. No, looks like I just need to extend it manually. Oh, no, actually, I did do it. Interesting. OK. So don't be afraid of cantilevers. Cantilevers are your friend in terms of uh, being able to support some things. There's all sorts of structural considerations about really how we're going to detail that corner where it all joins and how far out this can stick and really what the deflection at the end of this cantilever is going to be. But you can model cantilevers just fine, and that's a great way of going ahead and sort of opening things up. So things are going to be simply supported with columns right at the end. And cantilevers are quite OK. So for example, when I look at this structure, for example, let me go through and do the section. Let me zoom on out here. I always think about this structure as being a case where cantilevers could work. 
for example, I have this like sort of balcony area and there's a column here and then maybe eight feet in front of it there's another column here. So I think about that in terms of a number of ways I could support that. I could go through and take out this column right here. Okay. And then cantilever that out. That would be perfectly valid in terms of looking at that. Okay. I could go ahead and actually take out the one back here and just kind of have it supported on the end. There's a number of things I could do. I could think about, for example, doing a diagonal column. So don't be afraid of diagonal columns. Sometimes that's an interesting approach. If you want to think about diagonal columns, they're over here. Oh, hang on. I, I need to almost do it in the floor plan view. Can't say that. Let me go back to level two. Actually, supporting level two. I'm going to do it on level one. Now I'll do it on level two floor plan. I'm sorry. Okay. If I was going to think about putting a nice diagonal column in there, I guess it's over here on the end. What I can do is something like that. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out where I am. I think it's where I am. Okay. A diagonal column looks like this. I'll say structure, column. I'll say a slanted column. You basically have a height at level 02. It'll be, and here's the second click will be at level 3. Oh, come on, you. You're going to do it for me? OK, 2 to 3. So I can go here, and on the third level, it'll be over there. Let's see what I messed up on. Let me try it again. Column. Probably better do this in like a 3D. Turn off 3D snapping. OK. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I'm up a level from where I want to be. OK, no worries. Well, that's interesting. It thinks it's there. Oh, but for 14. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to place it again. But you can go ahead and have uh, diagonal columns. That's kind of OK, slanted columns. Don't be afraid of stuff like that. Or last but not least, one of my favorite techniques that not enough people use, but I think Peter may actually be using this, is you can hang things. Don't be afraid to hang things from the roof. If you have big beams or trusses up at the top of uh, your building, yeah, you go through and run rods on down and actually pick up the columns there. So the idea would be, it's interesting. They don't have a good threaded rod element just to kind of work with. I might go through and just as a way of simulating it, let's go ahead and say, oh, what can I do? I'll simulate it as a column. There's a number of ways I can sort of do this, but I'm just sort of messing around with what I think would be best. Let me go to structural steel, framing. If I did an HSS round, I don't have just like a nice rod. Do I have a rod? Welded, reduced, structural T, round bar. Oh, round bar would probably work. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. I have to go to structural columns. Load family. I went to structural framing. Structural columns, steel, pipe column. Nothing awfully interesting in there. Just a bunch of stuff in there. I'll go to pipe column. Just choose a really skinny one in there. go ahead and put something like that on there. Let's see what that looks like. Hmm. Try it again. Structural column. Vertical column. Height, level three. I'm on level two right now. That should be OK. R2. Let's see what's going on. It 
thinks it's there, but I'm not seeing it. I'll think about why that is in just a second. Oh, we'll play with that. Okay, so let us wrap up today with just this sort of way of thinking about it in terms of what your task is and where you're going to go next. Actually, I think I see it there now. There it is. I'm not sure why it's not showing up in the floor plan. Maybe I'm behind the cut line or something like that, but there's my little rod kind of hanging right there. So go ahead and at a high level, think about your overall structural form, really where the grids are and the overall organizing layout for what's going on. Think about really how you're going to support those floor and roof planes. And if it's a series of uh, columns or walls, go ahead and do that. If you want to go through and have a little more open structure, think how you could use trusses or cantilevers or rods or slanted columns or any of these techniques just to sort of create a little, you know, architectural interest and just not having to be everything so incredibly regular. Yeah, so just go through that and um, if you can go through and get the basic layout done in terms of how things are going to like uh, the basic structural framework, we will next look at the whole issue of how we add lateral reinforcement to this and how we put loads on it. Okay, but everyone's journey is going to be a little bit different on this. Like, your, your, your structure is pretty regular in form, so it'll be good. Yours is pretty regular in form. Well, have a more interesting time with this in terms of the roundness of your form and how we're going to go through and support that. Norman, I think yours is pretty regular. It's got some different edges. Yeah, it, it has um, it has like an arc for for some parts, of, like ah. with compression on the ground. Oh, very good. Okay, so we look at that. Is the arc at the roof or is the arc down ground? No, it's where the roof's at. So that's actually a really good taste. That that um, truss that we were showing, that can actually, if you have a, a rounded roof, it can it can do that. Okay. I think the top cord can go ahead and forward that arc, or we can think about. If you want to have some like curved beams or something like that, that come up and kind of carry the compressive forces down. It's all always doing that. I'm trying to think. What does your structure look like? You are. What's your What's your building look like? I'm trying to remember. Um, it's a, kind of like a box with zigzag walls on um, one side and the other side. Is, um, oh, that got okay. So yours is going to be very regular, I think, too. Okay, and Amanda, you have different shapes. You have sort of the dome shape and you have the kind of curvy shape. So, I don't know. We'll think about that. I think that at some level it'll be a very regular structure, although your grid lines may be radial in terms of following. <laughs> you see your eyes right now. <laughs> we can look at, yeah, when we're together, we'll talk about how your structure will lay out. I think, because you have some roundness in your structure. But that's okay. It's a regular structure. It just doesn't go in a straight line. It kind of curves a little. Okay, and Lemma, what's going on with you? You got these kind of interesting shapes on the outside that are very regular, but then the kind of very curvy. I don't know. We'll look at yours. But go ahead and see if you come up with the very basic idea of what's going on. And then when we get together this week, the idea is let's just go through and sketch and kind of think about your overall structural strategy. Okay? Let us break for today then. And I guess what's going on is I am just here for the rest of the day, even though no one's officially signed up. 